When it comes to security in my new house, I've upgraded the locks, I've installed the CCTV system, so all that's left to make this a really secure home is to install an alarm system. So today I'm going to show you how I installed this really easy boundary alarm system that's completely wireless. Nice. <laughs> A good day for some indoor DIY, I think. So today I've partnered with Boundary, the UK security company, to fit an alarm on my home. And because of that, at the end of this video, I've got a code that will save you a serious discount on their products. But first, let's go to the workshop and I'll explain to you why I chose this system. One thing I realized when I installed my CCTV system was I spent far more time messing around trying to feed cables around the house so they wouldn't be seen than actually installing the cameras and the hardware of the system. So now it's time for me to install my alarm system. I'm absolutely definitely going wireless because to be honest with you, unless you're in the middle of a house build or a full renovation, there is no way you're going to be able to feed the necessary wires around your house to the detectors and the sensors for an alarm system without them at some point being on show. So I've decided to go for this wireless system from Boundary. Now Boundary are a UK company and not only does this system send you push notifications and an automated call if it's triggered, but it also talks and is compatible to all your smart devices in your house like Google Home and Alexa and Philips Hue. So you can actually set it up that if someone tries to break into your house, you can try to deter them by turning your lights on, having them flash, playing music, dogs barking, Des O'Connor albums or whatever you think may deter the burglar from coming in. And depending on the package you go for, this can also trigger police dispatch. So you order this online on the Boundary website, which runs you through a number of questions about your property and how many rooms it's got and how many entrances it's got, etc. So the package they put together for you is enough to properly secure your home, as well as giving you options and additions that you may want to take up. I went with the medium bundle with the outdoor siren, but also got two extra key fobs, making four in total, because quite often there's four of us living here. So before I install this, let's have a look in the box and see what I received. So there's a fairly clear setup guide from first impressions, looks really quite straightforward and a couple of boundary stickers as well. So if I just take this out of the box. There's a hub, sensors and fobs, an outdoor siren. So let's have a look at the hub first of all. And this is the brains, I think, of the system. So this is the main control box. It's got a bit of plastic on the screen, which I'll take off once I've installed it. It feels rather nice with nice soft touch buttons as well. I can see four fixings in the back there. And it looks like it also comes with a standard USB-C, I think that is connection just with on a plug. So I think this is the only part of the alarm that's actually wired in. And it comes with fixings as well. So moving on to the sensors and fobs. In the package that I went for, I get four motion sensors and two contact sensors. These are the ones for the doors, and these are the ones, these are the sort of PIR, PIR type for the rooms. Once again, they've got plastic on the front just to protect that front section. And they're really quite light, to be honest with you. That's quite nice, actually. And they come with fixings as well. The contact sensors, these are the ones for the doors, and these come in two parts. One that has a battery in and one that it closes next to. So looking at this, and I know from looking at the website, these need to be like within an inch when it's closed for the system to work. So I just need to mount one on the door and one on the frame. Or is it this one could be on the frame and this one could be on the door, I don't know. I have to have a look at that. 
Then as I said, I've got four key fobs rather than two. You get two with the medium system, but I think I need four. So these are just quite nice rubberized lightweight fobs just for holding up against the control panel to turn it on and off. And lastly, the outdoor siren, which is the bit that makes all the noise and gets everyone excited if it goes off. Once again, that feels really quite substantial. Quite a nice design. I think it's designed to hang as a triangle like that. In fact, it is. It's even got its own spirit level at the back. I suppose if it's hanging like that, it's difficult to put a spirit level on it because there's no horizontal or vertical section. So they actually give you your own built-in spirit level to make sure it's not uh, all a bit wonky. Also comes with the required fixings and some pretty long screws and raw plugs as well. So that's what you get for the medium package and it's quite a nice setup actually. And you can see here on the, even on the cardboard box, without even reading the instructions. So they just run you through what you need to do. Download the app, set up your hub, install sensors and pair your key fobs, install the outdoor siren. So that makes it sound pretty straightforward. So I think the first thing I need to do is install the app, take all this into the house and we should be off and running. Now normally you'd want to fix this control box near to your front door where you go in and out of the house. Now unusually we tend to use the back door just because of the way the house is laid out and it means we come straight into where we keep the boots and the coats and what have you. So I want to fix it on the right hand side of this door around about shoulder height so I can see the display and I can punch in and out easily. I don't want it down here so I have to bend down. So my challenge is I see that I've got a light switch here and a double socket. So I know that I've got electricity in this area. And the last thing I want to do at the moment is to drill through an electric cable. Now, good practice means that when electricians fit these, they should be fed from directly from above or from below. And I know that I've got underfloor heat in here, so it's probably not from below. So I would guess that I've got cables, live cables going up vertically from both of these from about here and here. So I think I've just about got enough room if you look at the, the fixing points here. So what I'm gonna do, I don't need to take these off. I've got a Bosch detector that I'm just gonna use in this area to try to work out where the cables are and then hopefully stay away from them. <laughs> So I've just connected the hub to the internet and it gave me a code which I put back into the app. So these two are now talking to each other. So I don't think I've got anything more to do with that. I think I need to now go around the house, add in the rooms where I want the detectors and just set up each detector. So off to the living room. So this sensor is so light, there's no point in really using screws and raw plugs at all. You might as well just use the sticky 3M strips they give you. And 
And that's it. This isn't DIY. There's not nearly enough drilling and dust for this to be DIY. So that's all the motion sensors fixed. You didn't see the other two because they're in secret locations. But I must say, once you've done one, then each one only takes about a minute. It's very, very straightforward. So I thought I'd move on to something a little bit more challenging. And I'm going to put in on one of these door sensors devices. Now, you've got a big bit and a small bit. And the big bit is where the battery sits. And the small bit is just a sensor that has to be within 25 mil or an inch once it's closed. So they've got to end up pretty much like that. Now, on my door, I haven't got enough room to put the big one on the frame. So I'm going to have to go a little bit out of step and put that on the door. And even the small one, I haven't got enough room before it hits the architrave here to stick this. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of notching out with my multi-tool to get this in place. So because I'm mounting the heavier part of the sensor on the door and because the door is slightly textured, I thought it would be a good idea to give the 3M strip a really good push onto this door to get a really secure fix in. But it helps if you take the film off the sticky bit. Try this again, shall we? There you go. Excellent. Well, that was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? So, one thing I didn't mention to you was after the initial unboxing, I suddenly realised I'd forgotten to protect the most important room in the whole house, which is my workshop. So, I went back onto the website and bought another contact sensor and motion sensor. And although I've got a double garage that's detached, Obviously, this is completely wireless, so I don't even have to run any cables over there. It's only a few metres away, so I might as well protect my workshop as well. Now, if you once you've installed your system, if you ever want any more of these, you can just buy them and add them in just at a moment's notice. But luckily, these came quick enough, so I can do it all in one go. So, time to protect the most important room in the whole house. With sensors in the workshop, it's really easy to customise the alarm and put it on a partial set, which means it's still looking after my tools and my assets in the workshop while I'm going about my normal business in the house. I fit a short length of trunk in just to tidy up the cable coming out the bottom of the hub before my wife says, are you just going to leave it like that? And all the installation in the house is complete. So with everything else set up, the last thing I've got to install is the outdoor siren and they tell you to install this last as well. I thought I'd just come back into the workshop so I can show you a couple of things about the fixing of this because it's going to be difficult when I get up on the ladder. So the alarm section I have to open to make sure I activate the batteries and get the QR code just in the same way as all the other devices. Once you've done one, it's just a repetition, to be honest with you. But this alarm is the last thing that goes up after you've done everything else. And that's quite a nice idea. It's actually got a clip here. So when you get up there in the future to replace these batteries, which I hope to be many, many months, at least when you do open it, it actually clips open rather than coming back down. That's a nice little feature, that, I like that. This is the spirit level that I mentioned to you at the beginning, which will help me get it exactly 
I was going to say level, but it's actually 45 degrees out of level, diagonally le level. These are the batteries here, and I can see that there's a tab there that I need to remove to activate the batteries. So in some ways, it's just like all the other detectors. So time to get my ladder out and finish this little project off. So the good news is it's no longer raining. The bad news is it's the windiest day of the year so far. Just right for working at height. So let's just check if the thing works. On here there's actually like a panic alarm, so all I have to do is go into the app and I can just set it off without setting the device. So here we go. So that was pretty loud and that would definitely get people interested. So now everything is installed, it's time to test the system. Now the hub, when it's not doing anything, will just sit there with a blank screen. It's actually a touch sensitive screen, which is rather nice. Um, and it just has this light that sort of flashes in the corner to let you know it's still alive. So when you're checking out of the house, the key fob just needs to be held here and then you can arm the alarm and it gives you 45 seconds to get out and close the door as well. And only then is it armed, but you can cancel that at any time. And similarly, when you're coming into the property, it give you a certain number of seconds before you can either cancel it with the fob or put in a code which will cancel the system as well. Obviously, on the hub, you can set up anything you want, but in some ways, it's easier on your mobile phone and doing it on the app. So if we just log into the app here, you can see the status of all the sensors, including the temperature of each one as well around the room. And if you go into the settings, it will give you the status of everything, including the hub. So if we just tap onto the hub here, it will tell you that it's connected to the internet, Wi-Fi strength is excellent, 100% battery and everything else. It will do the same for the outdoor siren and each individual sensor you can tell what condition it's in at the time. The other interesting thing is that you can partially arm the whole system. So if you want to just set up certain rooms to arm, let's say if you're leaving pets at home, at the same time, this has actually got a pet friendly um, setup where the sensors actually can be programmed to recognize your pets. So as long as you haven't got something bigger than like a Labrador, you can actually arm the whole house and the pets won't set the alarm off, which is rather clever. The other thing I quite like is if you go into activity alerts, you can set up, if you press add alert, another uh, an activity that will give you an alert even when the alarm isn't actually armed. So if you want to know when people are going in and out of the house, even when the alarm isn't on, you can actually set it up here and it can tell you and give you alerts on everything that's happening around the house any particular time. So this app is really probably better than, the, than the, the hub and actually this is all you need. You just need the app and you can do everything from the app. It's really rather clever. So if you go over to the Boundary website, link is in the description below and put in my code proper DIY, you'll get 45% off of their alarm system. So it's absolutely worth going and checking them out and using my code. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe and please go over to Patreon. You can support us over there and get additional weekly content as well. So until next time, at least I know everything is now secure. I'll see you then.